Kempton football with Chris. Rumors, rumors, rumors. Transfers, transfers, transfers. Everybody's fortifying their team for the season. All the teams are gaining up, buying players. Rumors are trying to get players some cannot get. All speculations. But guess what? The MLS is going to be late this season coming up. Shibala. What's up, Vincent? What's up? Yeah, everyone knows you're a two time MLS champion. So basically, you know how it is to be a champion. And you won the championship from Houston Dynamo. And also, you live in Houston. So, what do you think of the challenge like Houston Dynamo over the years of bought new players in, you know, but they haven't been able to get the stack they used to have? Like, what do you think is happening right now? Why is it difficult for them to win the MLS championship? I think the uh, the organization has all the right intentions, um, but I think that what our club was built off of um, was forgotten. And I don't mean that in any negative way, but I think that um, you know when you look around the league, right? Like you look at organizations that are funded uh, by owners that are willing to spend a ton of money. Um, and nothing against Gabriel Brenner; he's done an amazing job. We won two championships with our club. Um, but he doesn't spend as much money as, let's just say, LAFC. You can't compare your club to another club comparatively and expect the same results, right? Every club has certain differences, whether it might be climate, whether it be, um, you know, the population, the community, the city, like for instance, the Northwest. And you can't just expect to have the same fan base as Seattle and Portland. They've had a rich, you know, uh, a background of, of football for many years. But with Houston, it's very interesting because we've had so much success earlier on, and then Chris Kennedy went completely away from it. Dominic Kinnear left, and then everything was lost because they were trying to find out, or not trying to find what the club was, what really was when it was already created and done, but it was, how do I say this, forgotten or lost, I guess we'll say for lack of better words. And um, I think that's what's really been plaguing the, the club over the past couple of seasons because they've been trying to replace um, leaders by paying new players or by thinking that bringing in internationals or um, you know Latin players are going to make the difference but our club was built off of hard-working blue-collar players that made you know average minimum contracts and the whole entire team was that way and there was a certain system that um, you know, we played by that I think was really the difference of Houston. Now, I'm not saying that you have to play the same way. Of course, football evolves and so does the game, but I don't think that the team or the club is really stuck to what was there in the past, and now they're doing it. I think, I know a long, long time ago in the past, I know Houston used to be a very um, academic-driven um, club. They used to have a lot of players that got to academy from college that were homegrown local players that used to, you know, they used to be very hungry and, you know, this extra desire to want to achieve, you know. But lately, as you said, I see more international players coming in and they don't seem to connect properly with the style of play. Like, everyone seems to have to play their own individual kind of play. Like, I, I, see, I see, I don't, I can't really understand how the game is with using that ammo, but I think there's a, they're lacking something to make it a complete team because they have brilliant players. Yeah. You know, they have uh, Elias, the Honduras uh, striker. He's very good. Like, one extra player they bring in. But as a unit, they just seem to lack that extra spice, that extra. So do you think it's a coaching ability or they need a certain kind of player to, like, you know, group, bring that team together to be that special, that specialness? Uh, I mean, Memo is a uh, young, you know, uh, academy player that's progressed, that's done really well for the team over the course of, you know, the past few seasons, and I mean, he was around our team earlier on, 
and I think he, he does bring some hope for me at least to what was there in the past but specifically to now in the future you know bringing in new players I mean when you change management right and you change um, you know head coaches um, you know Tab is out of his hands full because he you know obviously took on a group of players that obviously wasn't maybe his starting lineup right and you've seen so many changes from Houston Dynamo over, over this uh transactional period and I think that you're starting to see what I believe you know Tab has has in mind you know is to kind of bring back that hard-working you know youthful spirit that uh, I think our club is built around but I don't think it's one player I think it's an identity and I don't even think that I think it's it's it takes a it takes a team to build a club and a team doesn't mean, mean the players on the field it means the staff in the front office it means the fans in the community um, you know the groundskeepers and the kit man I mean it literally takes an entire organization to really win a championship and I don't think until the Houston Dynamo aligns with veteran players that have gone on to the past. I don't think it's the the community and the connection. You look at the games. Obviously, COVID is a is an outlier, but I think really like the fan support in the in one of the most you know populated cities in the in, in the United States. We should be having a bigger attendance for you know, the biggest game in sport in in the world, and we don't. And I think that's a I think that's an issue, and I think that comes down to the connection between the team and the community and um, and why should people care and why should they support the team. Thank you very much. Um, Seattle Saunas over the years, over the five, five years, they seem to have a really kind of dominance in the league. Yeah, if no one, being in finals, uh, being on the West Coast, what is the secret behind the Seattle Saunas there? Number one, they pay for some players, right? So they're, they're not afraid to go and buy um, good talent. Um, I think that the the city demands excellence because they have just high expectations. And I think the rivalry with Portland Timbers is a is a good one that makes them constantly continue to keep striving. But I think they found a good balance of senior players in the past. You know, um, Chad Marshall and um, Brad Evans. Uh, I mean, Will Bruins there now. I mean, you know, Alonso in the middle of the field. I mean, you just I mean, obviously they're there now, but like you just seem like some really key players stick around for a long time. And if you look back to Houston Dynamo, you can say that about Ricardo Clark or Brian Sheen or Brad Davis. I mean, you build clubs and successful teams around key players in certain positions that really make up, you know, what the team is, is, a, is about, right? You know, that, that culture and that, that community that you really need. And again, like, Winning a championship starts in that locker room. I think that the Seattle Sounders has been able to find him with Spencer and the way that he's been able to really bring that group together. And I mean, from days when I was in the NSL, when I was living in Washington, I remember going to a lot of the Sounders practices and being a part of that. And Spencer, as a coach, he was always a very player um, liked coach. You know, he was a very you, know, you have two different coaches, one the player that a player's coach and the other one that's more front office. And mm -hmm. he was very much in the locker room and had the respect of the team. I think that's really reflected on their success on the field. Okay, um, new season is coming up in a couple of months. I will have a new inclusion at the uh, MLS, which is the um, Austin FC. Yeah. New inclusion, you know. Everybody's fortifying the team right now. Uh, Inter Miami just got a new coach yep. of uh, Phil Never. Yep. Phil Never you know, was an excellent, was an excellent player for Manchester United, and same time was um, David Beckham's teammate for the country and also for United. He's going to be coaching uh, what's it called? Going to be coaching uh, Miami. Uh, right. So everybody's fortifying the team. Who do you think is going to win this season? Yeah. You know. I like Philadelphia. I know they lost some players this year, but they had such a promising end of the season last year. Um, I mean, they lost a few players, one for ball, some older veterans, but they're still going to be bringing back a ton of youthful young players that I think are going to be hungry to you know, make up what they missed last year. Um, you know, it's hard to look away from LAFC just because they've been one of the most dominant clubs in the, in the, in, in the MLS for quite some time. But I... I I can't really speak to Austin FC's team yet, just because I think it's really tough to, you know, expect a lot from um, expansion clubs. Um, you know, I think Portland was an interesting one because they were an expansion club, but they've been around for so long for them to win so quickly right afterwards. But um, yeah, I mean, I haven't seen or really familiarized myself with everybody's lineups yet, and I look forward to like the beginning of preseason to kind of see what everyone looks like, but. I would probably predict somewhere probably out in the East this is going to win this year again, but I'm not, again, I'm biased because 
<laughs> so you gotta choose one though. Columbus Crew. Do you think like okay, back to the yeah? Former... I mean, it's I mean, okay. I will say this. Uh, Tim Hanley, our former goalkeeper coach at the Houston Dynamo, I spoke with him, and um, you know, he's. I asked him. I was like, "Hey, why are you saying Columbus is? Because I think we can win another championship together." And I was like, "You know." Uh, and I was talking about Darlington, some of the players that, and he just said he's like the group that they have is crazy talented. And Tim Hanley has more MLS Cup championships than a lot of people, right? Sure. I mean, he's a goalkeeper coach, yeah. assistant coach. I mean, but he's he's seen what it takes, and he knows what it takes, and he and he's an X factor for me, you know. Because again, I talk about it, it's not just the players on the field; it comes on the coaching, it comes on the staff, the community. And I think Columbus had a special. Um, a special just energy, right? The sphericalness about them because they had something, right? With you know MLS wanting to get rid of that sure. that, that club, you know, their 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 fans yeah, yeah. having something to like play for, and there was some there was more meaning to uh, to that organization. They came up super strong at the end of the season, which is what you need. Mm -hmm. But I yeah, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I mean, I could see why you would say that. You know, I just there's only been four clubs that have won back-to-back -back championships, you know. So for any club to be able to do it again. Hats off to him. I hope they do. Yeah, I like Darlington. I hope, uh, hope he stays healthy and can finish out the year this year. Thank you so much for this. Yeah, brother. Thank you. That was Mark Shabala, two-time MLS champion. Just spoke in some minutes about what he thinks about the MLS and who he thinks is going to win the MLS in the coming season. Thank you for watching Football Recurs. Talk to you guys later.